tutorial you will need your selected yarn. I'm using Milamia Sweden Naturally Soft Aran. You can use whichever yarn you like in whichever way. You can really have a play around with this stitch because it can work up really well in any, um, in any weight. I'm going to be using a five and a half millimeter yarn uh, hook with this yarn. So just check your yarn label, the belly band, to see what it recommends. And again, you can play around with that sizing as well. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle to finish off your ends. As always, if you like my videos, please don't forget to leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll also leave all of the links in the description box below underneath this video, so make sure that you check that out. There will be a blog post with all of the information, including a pinnable image so that you can save this video for later and come back to this technique. Also, don't forget that in this corner here, you can click the settings where you can have some subtitles. You can change those subtitles to any language and you can also change the speed as well if you want this video to go a little bit slower. OK, let's get started. OK, so we're going to start off by creating our slip knots and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and for your chain, you literally just want to chain um, your desired width of your project. So that's yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You want to keep going until you get to your desired length, so either the amount of chains or a measurement, and then you just want to add one extra for turning. So go ahead, pause the video, complete your chains, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so once you've worked your chain, we're then going to start off with our row one, and this is pretty simple. We're going to do a double crochet into um, each stitch or each chain. Um, we're going to start in the second chain from the hook, so that's not the one that's on the hook, this is one and two, and we're going to be working into the back loop. So sometimes you work into the back loop here, and then sometimes you work into the back bump but this time we're going to work into the back loop. So we'll go into that chain, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two. So that's a double crochet. In the US, this is known as a single crochet because I'm working in UK terms. So again, we'll go into that next chain, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. Into the next, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Work your way all along the chain and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so now you've completed your row one, we're then going to move on to row two and this is the start of the thermal stitch. Now, I call these stitches the starting thermal stitch just because it's slightly different to the rest of the work. So we're going to chain one, which I've already done, and turn our work. Now when we work into these stitches, we're going to work into the back loop only. So if you were to work into a stitch normally, you go into the stitch like this and you look like you have two loops on the hook plus your um, working loop. But we're just going to go into the back loop only. We're also going to be working into the foundation chain at the same time. So you might want to just turn your work to the side like this so you can see where you're working into. And then directly under that stitch, you will see the foundation chain. And we're going to insert our hook into that loop of the foundation chain. So the unworked loop of the foundation chain. We're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. And then yarn over and pull through two to finish that double crochet. So we've just done our first double crochet. We'll then go into the next stitch and then turn your work if you need to, to find that um, unworked loop of the foundation chain. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Make sure that you are going into the next stitch because sometimes because this stitch stretches, it's easy to go back into there again. But if you just make sure that you go into the next stitch and into the foundation chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, the next stitch, the foundation chain. Yarn over, pull through two, 
pull through two and pull through two. Now as you work this, it does get easier. And as you build it, it also gets easier. I would say this first row, as with most things, are, is the trickiest. So just take your time with it. Make sure that you're working into the right stitches. Work your way all the way across and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so we're now at the end of this row two and you can really start to feel the chunkiness of this stitch, the double thickness. Um, but now we're going to move on to the actual thermal stitch, which we'll be repeating row after row until we get to the end of our work. So for here, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And it's very similar to what we've done before, but obviously we now have another row built. So what we're going to do here is go into the back loop of that first stitch. And then just underneath, we have the back loop of the last row. So it does actually look like the chain, um, similar to before, but that is actually the stitch from the previous row. And then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Into the next stitch and the row below, pull through two, pull through two. Next stitch, row below, pull through two and pull through two. So you're just going to work like this all the way along until you get to the end, pause the video and then meet me back for your next row. Okay, so we've now come to the end of row three and it's row three that we'll be repeating over and over until you get to your desired height. So what we want to do here is chain one and turn as before. We then have the current um, stitch, the current row. And if I turn my work this way, you can actually see and feel, feel that there is a ridge. And these two rows are actually going to come together like this. And this is what creates the double thickness. So what we want to do is go into the back loop only of that first stitch and then find the um, unworked stitch of the previous row and then continue to do what we've been doing before. So complete your double crochet. And you can see here that as you work and build the work, it actually becomes much easier um, to find those stitches. So you just want to go into each and every stitch along that row and you're simply going to repeat row three over and over and over until you get to your desired height of your project. So go ahead, pause the video or come back to me at a later date once you've built your project because I'm going to show you how to do your final row. So pause the video and I'll meet you back for your final row. Okay, so now that you've built your rows and I think for me this is around 25 rows, we're going to um, do the finishing um, row, so the row that we're going to end with. For this, we're going to chain one as normal, turn the work. Now, before we were going to the back loop only, this time we're going into the full stitch plus the unworked um, chain of the previous stitch and then continue as normal. So into the full stitch, into the unworked stitch and then do your double crochet. So that's pretty much it all the way along. So I'm going to work my way to the end of the row and then tie off and then show you what the final result looks like. Okay, so here we have my finished sample and the texture of this is just absolutely gorgeous. So thick and dense um, and it's also got a bit of stretch to it as well. This would be amazing for any winter garments. It's also good for pot holders if you're using the correct yarn. And also if you wanted a really nice snuggly blanket, this would be perfect. Um, I'd love to see you making this in different weight yarns and playing around with that. 
but this is the thermal stitch. I really hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial. If you want the instru written instructions, you can find them on a blog post, which I've linked underneath this video. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you share this with your friends if you enjoy it. Don't forget to click that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. Thanks again, and I shall see you again soon. Bye.